Now, everybody knows at this point that my favorite class is the engineer. Because of this fact, I have spent much time experimenting with several different build options for him. After a lot of different iterations, I think I may have found the ultimate engineer build that I am going to share with you today. Ah yes, the engineer class, the Dr. Eggman of the DRG universe, like Tony Stark if he was a lot louder, shorter, and cared a lot less about the well-being of his teammates. There are dozens of ways to play him, from death laser builds, to nuke launcher builds, to even stubby electric shock power builds. However, each of these builds have some form of weakness that they have a hard time dealing with. However, in today's video, I'm going to show you a build that not only has very few weaknesses, but is also extremely fun and satisfying to use, as well as having many different useful applications. So if you guys are ready, sit back, relax, and enjoy the ultimate engineer build in Deep Rock Galactic. By the way, if you guys want to see more build videos, or just more videos in general, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss another upload. Identify targets and exterminate. That's how it's done. This build is one that is highly effective and extremely entertaining and makes the most out of all of the engineer's loadout pieces. One of the best aspects about the engineer is his versatility, not being insanely good at one thing, but being proficient at many things. That is the basic premise of this build that we are leaning into with his adaptability. You assist the team in essentially every single way possible, from swarm control to boss elimination to area fortification to even escapes. What makes this build especially good is the fact that we are using the default weapons of the engineer, being the Warthog shotgun and the deep core grenade launcher. Now the overclocks we are using are a bit more eccentric and require some time to get your hands on, which we will go over later. Just realize that this build does not have any one particular role or objective and instead focuses on blanket coverage, which you will soon see why. So now let's get into the gameplay of this particular build and how it is meant to be used. As I stated before, this build doesn't really have one specific objective or role and that is simply because, well, it does so many things that it's hard to simplify it into one specific task. If I had to give some kind of specifics to this build, one thing it does very well compared to other engineer builds is boss damage. You can take chunks out of high powered enemies extremely effectively. To aid in our build, we are running the trustworthy Warthog Auto Shotgun as our primary weapon, and that's for a few reasons. The Warthog has a solid and well-rounded stat spread and is able to assist in many different situations. In this case, we want to use it in conjunction with our sentry gun using the famous turret whip mod in order to break up swarms and large groups of enemies very easily. Since this is the case, the overclock we are running is going to be mini shells, since we are primarily going to be using it to cause the explosive turret shots. The shotgun is meant to deal with very small and minimal threat enemies, while the turret whip is meant to deal with the ones that are a little bit more of a nuisance, but not quite as a high value of target. For those enemies, we turn to our secondary weapon, which is going to be the simple but effective deep core grenade launcher. This thing is our go-to weapon for big game hunting, and with our setup, is turned from a slow shooting, explosive area of effect machine to a pinpoint accurate railgun-like weapon capable of deleting almost anything in its path. This is done with the help of our overclock choice, which is one of my personal favorites in the entire game, the Hyper Propellant. With this, you will become a devastating force to any large enemy that you come across, and as such, you should save the bulk of your ammo for this thing for when you see something more imposing. Praetorians, oppressors, wardens, dreadnoughts, menaces, spitballers, anything that you do not want to stick around for too long. Be conservative with its ammo whenever possible, and use your sentry gun whenever you can in conjunction with your shotgun for efficient swarm control, and you will use this build extremely well. So now going into the actual loadout of the build, first we have our perk choices. Since this build is very versatile, our perk choices can be very flexible as well, and you could go in many different paths. In my case, for passive perks, I have thorns for some general survivability and a little more control over those super small enemies. Next, I'm running Born Ready for some general utility since we are going to be switching weapons fairly often and can utilize the downtime for those auto reloads. Lastly, we are running Resupplier for quicker ammo refills and better healing capabilities from those resupply pods. For active perks, again, you have many different options in terms of what you can take. Dash is never a bad pick and can give you much needed mobility when you need it the most. You can pair this up with really anything else, but for this build, I am running Heightened Senses for protection against those rogue cave leeches or grabbers. But if you wanted to swap this out for something like Iron Will or even Beastmaster, those would work great as well. Again, since this build is extremely flexible, feel free to experiment with different perk choices for different mission circumstances and figure out what works the best for you. 
Now getting into the core setup for the build with the weapons and equipment, and we're going to start of course with our throwable grenade. For this build, I think the one that works the best is the lore grenade since it allows us to corral enemies very well to make the most use out of our turret whip or grenade launcher shots. However, you could use either the plasma bursters or shredder swarm grenades for more direct damage as well if that's what you want to go for. Moving over to the actual weapons and their upgrades, our primary weapon is the Warthog Auto Shotgun. This thing is like the Swiss Army knife of the engineer's toolkit. For our purposes, we want it to be able to sling shells out at a very fast rate, as well as have a good amount of damage output. Making the Warthog even more useful for us is our choice of overclock, which is mini shells. This thing gives the Warthog a ton more ammo at the cost of much less damage output, as well as not being able to stun it anymore. The less damage doesn't hurt us too much, since we are primarily using it to launch turret whip blasts at the enemies anyway which the increased ammo helps out a lot. Still, you can use it to pick off the lower end fodder of the swarms if needed, and we do compensate for the damage decrease somewhat. On that note, to improve the Warthog even more, in the first tier I went with the supercharged feed mechanism for a faster rate of fire. We already get a huge increase in magazine size from mini shells, so getting more of that would just be a little bit overkill. Plus the faster rate of fire can help make up for the lower damage output. Moving over to the second tier, I chose the loaded shells for more pellets in each shot. Again, we really don't need extra ammo since we are already getting so much from mini shells and the spread increase is not really crucial for this build, so might as well try again to keep our damage up as much as possible. Third tier is kind of a choice that isn't really relevant, but I went with the high capacity mags for an even larger magazine. You could choose the recoil compensator if it's too much for you, but the Warthog's recoil has never really been too much of a problem to handle, for me at least, and the reload speed doesn't really matter if you know the art of reload speed cancelling anyway. In the fourth tier, it's really down to personal preference, but I chose the bigger pellets to help with the damage output again. The armor breaking is a fine choice too, depending on the circumstances, but usually I just use the grenade launcher for those heavily armored tough enemies. Then lastly, in the fifth tier, there is almost no competition here with the choice being turret whip. Essentially, this mod lets us shoot a round at our sentry gun to cause it to fire a powerful explosive shot that also fears enemies at wherever it is pointing. This is our primary way that we handle swarms using this build. In conjunction with mods from our sentry gun, which we will cover in a moment, you could set up targets very effectively and then just lay waste to a massive horde of enemies coming to your doorstep. Case in point, the full auto and higher rate of fire adjustment really doesn't do anything for us and doesn't warrant running over the power of the whip. Moving over to the grenade launcher, with this weapon our main goal is to be able to absolutely delete big tough enemies in an instant, more at the very least take massive chunks out of their health. First talking about the overclock choice, the true powerhouse for this weapon, we are using the hyper propellant. This thing turned the grenade launcher into essentially a railgun. It increases the projectile velocity and the direct damage by a metric <laughs> ton and changes it from explosive damage to disintegrate damage. Basically, if you directly hit your target, you will do massive damage. So for our mods, we want to lean into that as much as possible. So with that said, in the first tier, I chose the expanded ammo bags for even more ammo reserves. Obviously, we don't need either area damage or effect radius since both of those stats are made null and void using this overclock. On that note, in the second tier, I chose the exact same thing with expanded ammo bags again because, as said previously, the area damage is not important for our setup. In the third tier, I'm using Pressure Wave for armor breaking power. The projectile velocity is a little redundant with this build and the heat damage does not really add a lot to our damage output anyway. The fourth tier, I went with the homebrew explosives for some extra, albeit inconsistent damage. Both of the other two options have to do with AOE or blast radius, which is, as stated, not really something we have to use. Finally, in the last tier, we went with spiky grenades for even more direct damage on impact. While velocity is something that we can have too much of until it becomes irrelevant, the same is not true in the slightest for more direct impact damage. Lastly, briefly going over the upgrades for the rest of the engineer's equipment, for the sentry gun, we have a very simple setup. First, in tier 1, I chose the LMG Mark II. I like this one because the turret is powerful and does not require a lot of micromanaging with the multiple turrets. However, if you are good with keeping up with the multiple sentry guns, you could certainly go with the Gemini system. After that, I took the expanded ammo bags in tier 2 for more ammo, meaning the turret will have more whip shots. In tier 3, I went with penetrating rounds for more armor breaking power, and in tier 4, I went with the Hawkeye system for a better covering range as well as the ability to pinpoint targets to hit with the turret whip. For the platform gun, I went with the expanded ammo bags in tier 1 for more platforms, Plasgreet Mark II is the only choice in tier 2, and lastly, Repellent Additive to keep the bugs off of our platforms when needed. Finally, for our armor rig, we have the standard setup that I like to use, with Improved Generator in tier 1 to get our shields back faster, Healthy in tier 2 to make us more durable, Hazmat System is of course the only option in tier 3, and lastly, Breathing Room in tier 4 to help us in a pinch if we do go down. 
So give me my final thoughts on this build. First, if you are familiar with the Greenbeard build I did a while back for the engineer, focusing on a new player friendly build, this almost feels like an evolution or an upgrade to that specific build. It uses the same basic setup and loadout, but with a lot more advanced pieces being added into the mix. That being said, it is a very easy build to get the hang of and will make your engineer play that much better. It covers a lot of bases that is very useful in almost any situation, from swarm calling to boss elimination. Essentially, this build, as I stated, is the ultimate engineer build because it takes everything that it does well and multiplies it a thousand times over. Well, there you have the ultimate build for the engineer to become the pinnacle of Glyphid Annihilation in Deep Rock Galactic. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and are excited to see more build videos in the future as this was probably my favorite one to make so far. If you guys want to see more new player focused builds or more advanced ones covering more overclocks, or if there's any specific type of build that you want to see me cover, let me know down in the comments. I always love hearing what you guys have to say. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe because it tells me what types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.